continued teaming with Greg for about a year till WrestleMania 3, which is when you first, I guess, became the barber. Do you want to tell us what led to the office deciding to break you guys up and turn you into this uh, They didn't really. Uh, George, George Scott was still probably there, and then um, they didn't sell it. They didn't really tell me anything. We had began to uh, do some angles and things leading into the WrestleMania, something where Martel and uh, uh, Adrian Adonis were in the ring together, and, and, and uh, who was my other? Adrian was actually my partner, and Martel and Zinc or somebody were in the ring, and uh, supposedly Adrian was going to try to cut Martel's hair, but Martel did a quick switch in the corner, Adrian and I was looking away, and when Adrian came back, started cutting away on and it was me, and then started like a little feud between me and Adrian. Adrian was in a hair match with Piper, had been in an uh, angle with Piper, had the big blowout. Boom. I go down and help Piper win the match. Piper sends me the Clippers, said, okay, you cut his hair. I had no knowledge of anything really going to happen there. I just, you know, this is what we're doing. Went down and cut his hair. We had a couple days off after WrestleMania. Came back to Rochester, New York, to the War Memorial. Walked in. They handed me this white coat with a scissor and a comb in it. I said, now you're the barber. I said, what do you mean, now I'm the barber? Said, you're the barber. I said, what the fuck are you doing? Crazy, that's bullshit. Bruce Beefcake's on fire. Since when do you change a guy's gimmick who's freaking like, a, a top guy's on fire and on the territory why would you change it to some cr crazy thing like the barber? Like, the hair match is something you do once a year or once in a career. And there was, they gave me no direction, told me nothing about what's going to happen. I went nuts. I went in the world of worlds, an old building. I went down a hallway, found a, a, a room where nobody was in, and started beating everything I could find, slamming chairs, smashing, kicking the lockers, going crazy. I was ready to quit. I was so mad. I was like, this. I don't deserve this kind of treatment. That's not what you do. Somebody works so hard to get to do everything you ever ask of them. Never miss a day's work. Never be a problem. No drugs, no alcohol, no problems. And then you screw them. You're going to give them a gimmick and then no direction. And, you know, and hopes are ahead. Somebody says, we're going to get beef cake. He's going crazy. And he came in and I said, you know, what, he said, what's going on? I said, oh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is Patterson, Pat Patterson. Just, after all these years now, he's getting his revenge on me because you wouldn't let, like, you wouldn't let me be the job guy, uh, Lombardi, that he wanted me to be, another butt boy for him. And uh, now this is, the, now they're screwing me. I said, where, where are you going to, where are we going to go with the serious the barber thing? You know as well as I do, a haircut matches when the guy's leaving the territory, you'd see a U-Haul in the parking lot in the old days in Alabama and in the territories, and the guy was leaving the territory, got his haircut, took his wife, got in his U-Haul, and drove down the road. And everybody knew it. So what are we going to do with this haircut thing? And <laughs> Hulk already came out and pulled a rabbit out of his hat. <laughs> he says, well, what if Every time you go to the ring, you use the sleeper hole like Piper, Piper did. Use that sleeper hole. Nobody really was using it as a real fetch. Use the sleeper hole every time you cut somebody's hair. And I was like, that might work. There's only one man who made that possible. If I would have went to the office guys and said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Every time I go to the ring, you have to pay somebody two or three hundred bucks so I can cut their hair and blah, blah, blah. It might have worked one or two TVs, and then only got put a brush aside, and I would just put another guy out there wrestling. Hulk went back to Vince, and here's what we got to do. Boom, 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 boom. Then, they had, then I had the balls in my court, so I had to switch gears, make up some new gear, change it up a little bit. I thought of the Clippers, getting the big Clippers. So I went out in the crowds, 30,000 massive square gardens with a pair of scissors in my hand. 
and, and you know, and it's about visual thing. I, you know, those people in the top row, they can't see these little scissors in my hand. So I came up with the idea of the big hedge clippers and taped them up and shit, come out with these big hedge clippers, the barber, and I had spray paint and glitter and this and that, like mirrors, and I cut people's hair and show them the, the, the mirror of their head and have their head shaved off and then paint them with this hairspray painted, colors painted, big B on her chest, and the people went nuts. They loved it. It's never been done anything remotely like that before. And because we just kept hammering and hammering and hammering, every week, every week, every week, I would beat them, down they go in the sleeper, chop, 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 and humiliate them with the things on them, showing them the hair, the whole thing. And then it, it wound up turning into something bigger than Vincent or anybody ever even imagined. Why? I blow my own horn here a little bit. Nobody told me what to do. I was the ingredient plugged into the situation, giving the ball like the running back, brother, on the freaking five yards deep in the, uh, in the end zone. And okay, call last, because we got to have a touchdown or the game's over. Brutus Hall ass and made a touchdown. Fucking boom, there it was. Fucking home run, grand slam. 